Now as you can look in there, there's some ice in there and some bait in there. Yeah, they're gonna be my dinner. You don't like you like to fish, but you don't like to eat fish. Yeah. You ate a flounder. Uh, did you catch him? Yeah. yeah. There might be sharks here. Maybe. Well, hey everybody. As you might have noticed, I made a friend on the Muckleteo Fishing Pier. He wasn't exactly excited about eating fish out of the ocean, but he was fun to talk to. So today we're headed out to the Muckleteo Fishing Pier that's just south of the new ferry dock. I'm hoping to catch something more interesting than just flounder, but being that it's a sandy bottom area, there's a lot of flounder out there. So stick around and we'll get started in a second. Alright, so I've got my two ounces of banana weight piece of shrimp. We're going to try to cast out there into the deeper water and see if we can't catch something. I believe the tide's headed in now. We'll just put this out there, say our little fishing prayer, and hope for the best. I'm just using the, the same shrimp that I've been using. Man, they're out there. They're biting. I'm just not getting the hook right. I keep getting my bait. Man, not having any luck setting this hook. Let's see if we can get this bait on there in a certain way that it encourages the hook set. That was a hit. Come on, do it again. See, every time they, I feel that little tap on my line, my bait turns to mush and it gets yanked halfway off. They were chewing on that. I should have been setting a hook. I don't know, maybe that's a fish. Maybe it's just a bunch of seaweed. Oh, there's a fish on there. I can feel him. I've got one. Ha <laughs> ha! The littlest flounder! Come here! <laughs> They've been eating my bait. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Still a little bit of bait on there. Well, I'm not skunked. That's good. one there's one come on It's a flounder. It's like a, well, they call them flukes in other parts of this, the country. They're just a flat fish. And they like to swallow my hooks. Yeah, they get down in there pretty deep. Oh, 
What was that? Something silver just hit my bait. Like, like a little salmon or something. That was interesting. I might be in the grass again. Yeah, I think I'm in the grass again. Either that or there's something on there, but I didn't feel a tug. I think I went through another patch of... Oh, well. Another patch of grass or something. Well, it got heavy there for a second. Now it's not heavy at all. Well, there's something on there. Another little flounder. <laughs> oh, that's a... That one's got a bite out of it. That's different. This is, I believe... This one's got, actually got a mouth big enough to... get that hook in there. This fish is has been... Look at that. Something tried to eat him. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna let him go. Not that he's gonna make it. Stop it. It's my last piece of shrimp. We'll use this one up. And we'll uh, call it a day. Call it an afternoon. Tides come up a bit. I think we're about halfway up the pilings now. Let's see what's over there. Oh, there's something that just hit pretty hard. What is that? Oh, wow, that was an aggressive hit for such a little fish. hooked him so that's as easy as that okay the first thing to know about cleaning a flounder and filleting a flounder is they're quite slimy so I rinse them off thoroughly and I do this outside so as not to traumatize the family. My daughter's a vegetarian, a pescatarian. She does eat fish. So I do this outside to minimize the trauma to my family. So, important thing, rinse the slime off the fish. You make, and I'm right-handed, so I turn them around this way. You find the lateral line on the fish, which is right here, like that. You, you cut into the fish right on the lateral line. And it's important to have a good, sharp knife. The skin of a flounder is very tough. So, I don't try to clean them like you would clean a, a trout or what have you. So now that we've cut into, we may cut along the lateral line, you just find the spine and you simply cut along the bones this way and you'll get a nice fillet Continue to just follow along the spine bones like that. There's some bones right there that I seem to have gotten into my fillet. And once you get to the, where the skin is, so 
basically just cut it off, being careful not to cut yourself. And flounders are pretty small fillets, but they're pretty tasty, so they're worth the effort. So on, right now you've got the, the, the little guts part on the lower half, what would be the lower half of the fish. This is where their entrails are. So I like to cut like this and kind of around the soft spot, the soft underbelly of the fish. And there's a little bit of it right there. And then same situation, just find the spine and make a cut right along the spine and that allows you to peel, peel up the fillet. Like that. This side of the fish, the fillet is always smaller, about half the size. So there you go, and there's a, there's a little bit of meat left right there, but, you know, on the white side of the fish, it's the same situation. There's the lateral line. You cut right along the lateral line, like that. And on the underside, the white side of the fish is always harder to fillet than the brown side. So again, you find the guts part, wash some slime off because they continue to exude slime the entire time you're filleting them. And it's the same situation, you just run along the spine as best you can. And this is the smallest of the three fillets. And sometimes people don't even bother with this one. Because it's so small. And there you have it. And that was a bit of a hack job. <laughs> but that's more or less the way it works and has, and the bigger the fish the easier the fillet i will show you how to remove the skin okay and it's off the process by which we take the skin off of these because flounder skin is very tough is you just cut into the thin part of the fill it right there until you get down to the skin and then you put your finger I put my finger on it and you, pull, you tilt the knife down toward the skin and again the skin is pretty tough flounder skin is really tough so if you keep the knife tilted toward the skin you get the skin off without too much trouble. There's a little flounder meat. It looks like I got some of the skin, but that'll, that's okay. And there's the skin. And it's a very clean, once you rinse it, white meat that is pretty darn good. This is the largest of the four fillets from the flounder and pull it toward the edge. That's what I always forget to do.
So I'm going to do the rest of these and we'll get back and we'll pan fry these in a cast iron pan. Okay, so the simplest way to cook a flounder is to fry it in a pan. I have a cast iron pan that I'm going to put some olive oil in and some salt and then uh, we'll fry it up. It's a quick process. We'll throw some pepper on there. If I was going to eat this as a meal, I would, I would eat it with rice and maybe uh, some sort of sauce. My culinary student son would know better about sauces than me. But um, anyway, we'll just fry them up, give them a taste, and get to see how that's done. Okay, so I have my little cast iron pan preheating with some olive oil in it. I'm going to spread this fish out and put some salt on there. And once the pan gets up to a good temperature, we'll just pop it in there and fry it up. And when it turns white like that and gets flaky, that's how you know they're done. It takes minutes to cook it. And there it is. Just quick pan fried flounder. Try not, get, not to get one that's too scorchingly hot. And that is pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Pretty delicious. And there's because it's such a light white fish, you can actually do many recipes with it. Fried, baked. My son steams it. It's pretty good. Well, there you have it, friends. My first attempt 
at a catch clean cook video. I hope that the end portion wasn't too either gory or difficult to watch with the first person view camera. Um, next time I'll have to set up some other angles so that we can get a different perspective on what's going on. As far as the fish goes, it was pretty darn delicious. If, if I were to do it again, what I would do different would probably be to add some citrus, lemon, or lime to the recipe and to cook it a little hotter to just get a little char on the out edges of the fish. So thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap the like button and ring the bell notification icon so that you know when more stuff comes up. Thanks for watching. Keep fishing and stay safe.